Hey guys, today we're taking a look at Derelict Void. This is a game that is coming out on eight, on uh, March 18th by Sterling Games, and in full disclosure, they gave me a free key for the game, so if you feel that taints my playthrough or uh, review of the game, there you go. Uh, this is described as a space survival game involving scavenging for resources and base management. Apparently it's kind of a roguelike uh, city builder set in space. Apparently we have to gather enough resources to build up our ship, keep our crew alive, and attempt to escape the void. At least that's my understanding of what we're going to be doing. So let's jump into a new game. Give it a try. Let us report the beginning. We suspect that it was some sort of accident. A wormhole collapsed, tearing random objects all around us into some new, new place. We are now drifting around some unknown star. We are not the only ones here. There are distress signals and transmissions from the remnants of what was the local government. Within our own good ship, we have just finished patching together what we can, can and picking up ourselves. Picking ourselves up, sorry. Dyslexia. We can count ourselves fortunate to have an engine. Supplies are low. Continue reading status report. That's the tutorial. Uh, yeah, since I have no idea what this game is about, Tutorial. Move the camera with WASDA and click, drag, or Q and E to rotate. Okay, click uh, middle mouse button. S zoom is scroll in and out. Captain, please refer to the guide above for controlling the external view of the ship on this interface. Okay, so that's pretty standard. I know enough. Uh, you get no more. Time controls. Play, pause, next event. Pause time is indicated by a blue border. I guess that's uh, the border we got going around here. Captain, please feel free to pause at time at any time. It is worth taking your time. That's a lot of time in that sentence. To understand the current situation and plan actions. Play, pause can be toggled using the play, pause button using the controls on the top center of the screen or the space bar. Again, pretty standard. When time's paused, the screen will show a blue border. Uh, resources. Captain, we're faced with a resource shortage. The ship's population will need food, water, and oxygen to survive. We will not survive if we deplete any one of the three vital resources. The resource monitor window is visible on top corner, top left corner of the screen. Uh, to expand the resource monitor to view the details, use the expansion button on the bottom right. That's that. Okay. Oops. Now I guess I can't make it any smaller. Currently have 60 hours worth of food, 57 hours worth of water, and 4 days worth of oxygen. Carbon, organics, and hydrogen are stagnant, whatever that means. Wastewater is increasing, CO2 is increasing mass population okay. when we're faced with a resource shortage the left and right edges of the screen will flash orange when we're faced with a critical resource shortage the left and right edges of the screen will flash red or demise is imminent it is imperative to either find or increase the production of the resource there are three different building types factories storage buildings and amenity buildings Factories provide resources necessary for survival, for example, oxygen, water, and food. Storage buildings uh, do not produce any resources, but some of them can be can give adjacency bonuses to life support buildings. Storage buildings cannot be moved. Amenity buildings do not provide resources necessary for survival. They instead provide a boost to population's morale. You will discover some buildings with some, with parts some parts missing. Buildings will not function when they lack parts. Parts must be salvaged from other identical buildings. Salvage building parts. Explore building. Toggle on and off. Relocate building. Boost productivity. Demolish building. Upon selecting a building, you will see the contextual buttons with, a, with different interactions. If an action is unavailable, the button will not be interactable. Explore. When we first dock to a hull, we do not know immediately what buildings are in that hull. 
Exploration allows the crew to, ex to determine what buildings are present in what condition. Salvage parts. Some buildings that you will discover will ha not have enough parts to be operational. While we cannot build new buildings from scratch, we can salvage parts from abandoned buildings and transfer them to identical buildings that lack parts. Toggle on and off. Turn a factory on and off to throttle resource production. Uh, the productivity of a building can be boosted by assigning a crew to it. Assigning a crew to relocate a building from a docked hull to a ship. Bear in mind that this will take time and productivity, productivity will decrease to zero while relocating. At times, it may be necessary to demolish a building to make space for other buildings to fit into our ship. Allow me to draw your attention to the travel button. Resources need to be gathered by traveling to different locations. Travel destinations will be made available to you when you click on the travel button. Don't know where that is. Uh, it is worth taking into consideration the fuel required, time required, and whether any resources are detected when selecting a travel destination. Containers may have resources. Hulls may contain buildings. After you select uh, your travel destination, you'll have the opportunity to select your preferred engine settings and to allocate resources you have on hand to convert to fuel. Under engine settings, you're able to throttle your engine engine from maximum efficiency, less fuel required but takes more travel time, to minimum efficiency, more fuel required but takes less travel time. Once you select your preferred engine setting, you will have the opportunity to convert the resources you have on hand to fuel by either using the sliders or pressing the buttons next to the sliders. A button press will automatically allocate the percentage of corresponding resource into fuel. When enough resources are allocated for fuel use, the Confirm and Travel button will become pressable. Press the button to start traveling. If you decide to change your engine setting during the process, resources needed for fuel will be recalculated. Okay. So, pause? Unpaused? Um... This is paused. That's unpaused. I think. Okay, so... Uh, okay, graphics are good. Pretty solid. Music sounds uh, eerily appropriate. Okay, so that's the travel button. And that's all that kind of stuff. Where's like, how do I like build things? Gas storage. One part, one parts. One of one parts. Five tons, residential complex, housing capacity 25, liquid storage, five tons, residential complex, another one, another one, and a warehouse. Okay. Um. Okay. Travel destinations. Yeah. How, how am I supposed to actually build things? Average living conditions 25. Is that good? No idea. Uh, open and close. Oh. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so we can kind of close the whole thing up or see what it looks like inside. Quest log. Nope. That's just exiting to the thing. I can concede defeat now. That would probably be a good idea. All right, whatever. Uh, asteroid with active comms. This asteroid has active communications emitting emitted from it. Uh, travel time is eight hours. Distance, ever. Okay. Asteroid with carbon detected. Is that? Do we need carbon? I don't know. I maybe maybe we use that for uh, building. Uh, oxygen detected, I... I mean, we're we're basically at full. Looks like we're at full for oxygen, so we won't do that. This one's six hours away. Nothing actually detected. Beacon seems safe, offering emergency supplies. Now yeah, let's go to this one. Okay, engine design mass, 250 tons. Ship mass, 181.8 tons. Engine mass efficiency, 137%. So we want to convert... 
Collected fuel, we need 199.4. I don't know, let's use... Use some of us. Gas coming. Ah, oh, that just jumps by twenty. Mm. There we go. Use some carbon because we're going to be getting carbon back, right? Actually, let's try hundred of that, and organics. Like, I don't know what I don't know what any of this stuff is. And uh, a bit of hydrogen. Oh no, wait, we have more than enough. There we go. Adjust down overfueling. Perfect. Okay. Traveling time, seven hours. Okay, can we just kind of skip there? That's not making much difference. Gonna just, uh, yeah, accelerate to next event. Perfect. After arriving at the asteroid, to the asteroid, the crew took it took to its surface. The asteroid is carbon rich and so a mine has been constructed to extract its core. The team recovered some carbon that was left inside the mine. 200 carbon. Good. We used about 100, a little bit under 100. And so we got uh, 200 back. Nice. Raid the abandoned mine's warehouse. Quickly scout at the mine. Seems dangerous. We got the carbon. Now, no, no. Let's go ahead and Raid the warehouse. Ooh, we got water and oxygen. We hiked to the warehouse and found some spare resources. Okay. I still don't know how to build. Ah, there we go. Hey, I gotta click on the on the thing. Okay. No, detach hull. Enable auto explore. And that's travel. Um, did I miss something somewhere? Magnetoplasma engine. Housing capacity is zero. Living conditions minus 1,000. That's kind of goes without saying, I guess. Active events available crew two. Power on and off, no. Oh right, of course, we can't build new buildings. We have to find resort find the components first. Gotcha. So this is another one with uh, carbon detected, water treatment parts detected. Floating hull. I mean we seem to be being oh, our food and water situation like drastically dropped. We used half of our food for that one trip. Good grief. Okay, um, we might just end up starving to death, I guess. Uh, let's, there's no food around here. Unknown resources. Okay. Unknown resources. Let's go for it. Use, uh, our massive amounts of carbon. And carbon is not, uh, not very efficient. I'm surprised our water dropped that much because we got a bunch of water. Hmm. Ooh. Okay, we're literally going to spend all of our carbon, almost our, all of our carbon to travel there. Right on. Let's go. 
On approach, we see a standard cargo container adrift. Secure the container. Let's see what we have. Hydrogen. Okay. Now that time we used a lot less food. Weird. All right, radio transmission, uh, survival equipment detected, food detected. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're we're going for food. We burn through all our carbon. Um, use hydrogen. Wow. Yeah, you don't need a lot of hydrogen to get there. Military caches are normally nearly impossible to detect, however this cache must have malfunctioned or disarmed as it was pulled into the space. There is still a risk that the tamper protection for each container is armed. With the right credentials, the containers can easily be opened. An alternative approach is to jerry-rig an EMP that should disable any automatic security. Hmm. Okay, yeah, this one requires crew. We'll take two hours. Can we dig up some working credentials? Oh, with a smooth click, you got 40 food, that's all? Oh, apparently that's quite a bit. Okay, we really don't have a lot of capacity for food. I think that's the problem. Uh, how about trying to burn the rest open? <laughs> um... Okay. Um, three hours until that happens, okay. And we got a ton more food. Hey, it was worth it. We watched as there was a bang and scattering of debris. On inspection, we found that the security systems are disabled as intended. It worked. Okay. So we're short on water. Oh, we actually have... We, we got a lot of... We got way more food than we had before. Okay, that sounds good. Asteroid cache beacon. This beacon seems safe. It's offering emergency supplies, survival equipment, unknown resources. Uh, drifting shuttle. Seems to be disabled. That's a long way away. This one's the, sh the closest. Offering emergency supplies. We don't really have an emergency at the moment. We are dispensing free survival equipment to everyone who needs it. Well, let's go to this one. And we'll use... Um... Yeah, hydrogen definitely seems to be the most efficient. Oh, there's also oxygen. Let's use the hydrogen. Hope we come across like more hulls because we need to add to our thing. On approach, we see a standard cargo container adrift again. Secure it. Have water. Disappointing. No, water is like totally fantastic. I don't know why this is down here. Yeah, whatever. Damage tanks, oxygen uh, detected. Speeding container, intercept is possible. Interception is possible, but relatively, relatively velocity could make docking impossible. Okay, beacon. We want more water? I mean, I guess we want more water. Seem to be doing pretty good. I think we need food sooner than water. And of course we burn through all our carbon. Let's try the uh, active comms. It's hydrogen again. Well, so far this is a fairly chill game, I guess. A group of volunteers, quote unquote, have brought to our attention that they are willing to train at performing crew activities. If their families could get extra rations, Training would be expensive, taking the time of existing crew for about two days, and the ration price might also hurt us. What is our decision? Lose 187 water and 25 food. That is half of our water, but we'll have more crew. Yeah, okay, let's do it. 
When approached, we see the astro asteroid has... Oh, is this... Oh, we're down to 24 hours worth of water. Crap, that's not good. When approached, we see the astro asteroid has a building built into the rock. We sent in our ground crew, and they report the building is some sort of military bunker. The entrance is blocked by a large metal door, and there are active security cameras around. The crew notice a terminal to the right of the door. Blow up the door. Costs hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, how about knock on the door? Oh, surprisingly the door opened. Plenty of resources inside. Water, food, oxygen, hydrogen, and organics. Wow, okay. Nice. Uh, and that's probably good because we're burning through a whole bunch of resources to train this crew. Recordings being spread around the ship. It shows that shows what are probably the last minutes on another ship as the oxygen supply ran out. Oh, that was disturbing. Training successful. Plus one crew. Cool. And we seem to be okay with uh, resources. We've got 44 hours worth of water. Okay, water detected, carbon detected. Yeah, still no food detected. I haven't run into any more um, hulls. I didn't realize the hulls were going to be quite that um, rare, I guess. I guess it's going to take a while to actually get the resources to build anything. All right, uh, let's do... Food? I have four days worth of food right now. Electronic signals are coming from the asteroid. Asteroid with a mining facility on it. Detected the shuttle lost power. Can tell if there are people on board. Sure, let's go check this one out. We can probably start using uh, oxygen, actually, for fuel. Final scan as we approach shows nothing remarkable except for the likely presence of food. Bitter cold in the shuttle, yet somehow a few people have survived. They're amazed to be found and desperate for rescue. Okay. Food and people. I assume the more people we have, the more uh, resources we go through. Monitoring transmissions. Recently, some members of the crew have been sharing transmissions we've picked up from other ships. Sometimes the content of these messages are disturbing and shocking. It's possible that messages like this could trigger a panic or general trauma. On the other hand, not all news is bad out there, and communication with other ships helps keep hope alive. If we ban communication, people will not like it, but it might prevent unpredictable events from events effects from events outside of our control. Restrict general communication. People need to understand the situation we're in. Yeah, I'll be honest with everybody. I know it probably is going to cause issues, but whatever. Frozen asteroid. Water detected. That could be good. Got a speeding container with food. Got a sensor. Oh, there's an accelerating hull. We've detected a hull somehow accelerating without an engine. Yes. Yes, let's check that out and let's use uh, oxygen for it. And we have lots of hydrogen, but whatever. We are now in docking range of the strange hull. While it is slowly accelerating, it should be possible to safely close distance and dock. The hull is electronically active, but so far attempts to hail whoever's on board have only held si had have had have only had silence. In docking, yeah, go ahead. Captain, you've arrived at your first hull destination, finally. Once you accept the arrival report upon reaching your destination, you'll have the opportunity to select which segment and port of the ship you would like to dock and the new uh, dock the no new hull to. Adjust the hull position relative the sh to the ship with your cursor. Dockable areas will appear in green and click to dock. Now, does, it, does I wonder if this be, becomes a permanent part of our ship. And once the docking process is complete, the hull can be explored, and we could obtain resources and buildings or building parts. 
I understood. Hull actions. Captain, please allow me to bring your attention to hull actions. Upon selecting a hull, you will ha see the contextual buttons with different interactions. If an action is unavailable, the button will not be interactable. Reposition hull. At times, it may be necessary to reposition a hull to optimize the layout of our ship. Yeah, it definitely seems like this is going to be, like, added to our ship. I wonder if you can remove pieces later. Um, detect detach hull. Oh, each hull we are docked to adds mass to our ship, therefore it increases the amount of necessary fuel for travel. Detaching a hull before traveling will allow us to travel without converting as many resources to fuel. Toggle, auto explore the button. This button will enable our crew to explore all buildings in the selected hull. Understood. Next. When we first dock to a hull. Not much is visible in the hull. Buildings will need to be explored in order for the rest of the hull to become visible or explorable. Resources may be found in storage buildings and factories may be present as well. The enable auto auto explore button will enable our crew to explore all buildings in the selected hull. Okay. We are assigned to building and hull actions that can be viewed at the top. So right now we have three available. We have two crew available to begin with, and we've already trained another one. If there are more than two building or hull actions queued up under active events, the third action will appear but will not have crew assigned to it. It's possible to unassign or reassign crew as to a desired action. Okay. Um... You're about to cancel docking. No. Okay. So I can basically... Yeah, like I can put them wherever I want, right? So, yeah, we'll do it there. I mean, that kind of makes sense. I also... Oh, good, okay. I can rotate this way as well. Alright, so what is this thing? Electrolysis. Three parts. Storage. Or building four hours. We got 30. Uh, how long is that going to take? Six hours. Parts. Yeah, go ahead. Skip to the end of that. Yeah, we're running out of uh, water. We have received back a report on the gas storage interface. The standard pressure interfaces have been replaced with familiar hardware that is attached to piping leading elsewhere in the ship. It's not possible to easily determine how much gas might be in storage or safely remove it. All the gas being used as propellant. Okay. Or rubble. Okay, let's do this one. I know we're gonna we're gonna get a little be a little tight on, uh, on water. Communications reports a transmission using government emergency system encoding. This is the former Gate Colonial Authority. If you're receiving this message, you're aware that some sort of spontaneous spatial translation event has occurred. We simultaneously announced the formation of a provisional system authority and a state of emergency. Please do not panic. Please forward ship manifests and damage reports. We will begin coordination of relief and rescue operations. And know that we're alive out here. Relocating buildings and salvaging building parts. Select building. Captain, if you desire to relocate a building, you can do so by selecting the building you wish to relocate and clicking on the Relocate Building button. Adjust the building position on your cursor. You can rotate the building using the R key and click to initiate relocation process. It'll take time for the relocation to complete. If you desire to salvage building parts and transfer to an identical building with not enough parts, you can do so. By selecting the building you wish to salvage and transfer parts from, clicking on the salvage button, and selecting the building you wish to transfer the salvage parts to. Click the one you want to salvage, click the salvage button, and then select the building you want to transfer it to. This will take time. 
We received uh, back a report on the electrolysis factory. Factory has been extensively modified. Some pressure vessels have been attached to piping that leads deeper into the ship. This part of how the module is moving. Okay, so salvage move. Can I? Oh, I can take that with me. Okay. I want to. I want to search the rest of the stuff, but I'm getting a little bit antsy about the amount of of um, water we've got. There's water detected right there. Nine hours. Uh. Hmm. Yeah, because we're not going to be able to fully explore this thing. But let, let's go ahead and just take it. We're going to burn through more fuel. To, nah, that's fine. Oh, we'll go here. There you go. It's not even that bad. Our exploration team has been approached. Apparently, the sole occupant is an engineer who was stranded alone during the event. They're responsible for the unorthodox modifications found. While they seem slightly sad at the prospect of abandoning their work, they are hoping to lend their expertise in exchange for rescue. Absolutely. We've arrived within range of the mining base. Sensors now active. Show active, active equipment. It's possible to dock, so shovels must be deployed. Oh, it is not possible to dock. Comms reports that there are active signals. Meanwhile, we've detected water as expected. Um, yeah, we kind of desperately need water. But we'll find out how that turns out in the next episode. Thanks for joining me, guys. Take care.